My first symptoms were an acquired dyslexia, so suddenly not being able to spell and seeing colours and numbers back to front and that affected my driving because I was seeing red and green back to front and going through red lights thinking they were green lights and vice versa. Um, so that, that was complicated. Driving became quite complicated uh, really within a couple of years and uh, because I see things back to front I was seeing one-way road arrows back to front so I was going down one-way roads the wrong way. Um, these days it's progressed in some ways in that uh, some days I have trouble speaking, some days I have trouble remembering how to make a cup of coffee or how to get dressed. Um, other days like today I'm doing really well but having to think very hard um, to still get my words out. Uh, so it's, a, it's kind of like being at sea on a rudderless boat. I kept working until I lost my driver's licence and I was having trouble driving, uh, which I mentioned to my doctor. He then made me have a driving test, which I failed. When I could no longer drive, and I, the job I was doing, I needed a, to be able to drive, I lost my job. I now know that in Australia, I should have been supported to stay at work, but in a different role. And I could still be working in a paid job. The more we can educate the world that dementia is different for everybody, that there's lots of different types of dementia, that it's not just memory loss, that we have a legal uh, and ethical right to have a voice, that we must be included, that we must have access to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, that we need a human rights based approach to our care. That they're, there's a lot of them. They're my driving forces. There's really, to, there's a bit of a snowball effect happening at the moment since I spoke in Geneva a couple of years ago. And so um, human rights, disability rights is becoming quite a powerful thread in pretty much all of the advocacy around the world.